A girlfriend once accused me of playing games with her, even though she never once said yes when I asked her to play Halo with me. This is why I started pretending not to like you, Jennifer. Valve has finally officially acknowledged its secret slash not really secret MOBA shooter Deadlock by launching a Steam page for the game. You'd think that since the game has shot up to a peak of over 89,000 players that everyone must be thrilled. And you'd be wrong. Indie developer 3D Glyptics is furious that Valve has published a Steam store page without at least five screenshots, a direct violation of their own rules, I might add. But yeah, other than that, sentiment is pretty good. Streamers apparently love the game, with Shroud calling it possibly the best third-person shooter he's ever played. And he's played at least one of them before. <laughs> Meanwhile, another hero shooter type game called Concord has been released. I guess you must have forgotten, since the title launched with less than 700 players on Steam, and the 24 hour peak is now half that. And the console story isn't much better, apparently PS5 players are having trouble entering matches. Concord is actually one of the games to be featured in the upcoming video game anthology series Secret Level on Prime Video, but it's possible that when the series debuts in December, Concord won't exist. They have some retro games with in there. Your help with them for the price of a cup of coffee. It's really a tale of two shooters. One seemingly tried to not get attention and got all of it, while the other tried really hard to get noticed and received almost no attention at all. There's probably a lesson there. I don't know what, but it's there. Something about flies and vinegar, it gets messy. Mm. Don't drink vinegar, kids. Or flies. There's even more Half-Life speculation this week with reports that Valve may be working on two new entries in the beloved franchise. Tyler McVicker, Valve leaker extraordinaire, has previously reported on HLX, which he claimed is a non-VR Half-Life game that may be Half-Life 3, okay? This has been recently corroborated by fellow leaker Gabe Follower. But McVicker has now claimed that the long rumored Deckard headset is still in production at Valve and it's likely that a VR title is being developed to showcase its features. The same way Half-Life Alex was able to showcase the features of the Index. McVicker also speculated that this VR game could be connected to HLX, citing previous rumors of an asymmetric multiplayer game where a VR player controls Alex Vance and the PC player controls Gordon Freeman. McVicker seems to suggest that it's possible that these two games could share some cooperative elements. Having said that, this is speculation, but at least some of the previous reports on HLX may have teeth as Valve has apparently gone through their code base and renamed all of the hints about HLX that McVicker found in his last video. Maybe it's all nothing, but I want to remain hopeful. All I want in the world is for Valve to once, just once, successfully count to three. I you can do it. I want to know they're capable. <laughs> can you do it? Please. There's been a lot of PS5 Pro news since Gamescom. Apparently the rumored console was an open secret at the convention, according to WCCF Tech, with at least one developer openly admitting they had received the specs for the current gen refresh. In addition, Lorenzo Fazio from Italian website Multiplayer took to Twitch to share his own Gamescom experience in this clip. Reddit user Fabio B93 wrote an English transcript in case you have difficulty reading Italian lips. I mean, it's understandable. Fazio apparently claimed a developer decided to delay their game due to the upcoming launch of the PS5 Pro. According to Jeff Grubb, the Pro is still planned for a release this year and there'll be a state of play at some point in September, which is likely when the Pro will be officially announced. Now this isn't the only hardware news lately. Tom Henderson of Insider Gaming believes there will be more handhelds coming soon. And when asked about a dedicated PlayStation handheld, suggested that Sony is paying very close attention to the handheld market after the surprising success frustratingly so for some, of the PlayStation Portal. It's just you. I, I, I don't like it. Destroy it. What, do you want me to thank the millions of screen-starved parents who shelled out $200 for a controller with a display-shaped tumor? Well, I won't do it. But I will thank our sponsor, Secret Lab. Their Magnus Pro Desk is versatile and premium, featuring an all-metal tabletop. Hey, that makes it very compatible with the magnetic cable management products at ltdstore.com. Neat. 
Speaking of cable management, the Magnus Pro features a full-length cable management tray, as well as an integrated power supply column. You can even customize your desk by adding a magnetic desk mat or magnetic RGB light strips. And if you need extra desk space, you can grab a PC mount and monitor arms during purchase. Go to lmg.gg slash Magnus Pro to check it out today. Hi, I'm a weird noodly guy who needs exactly five small gaming stories twice a week to live. And that's why I trust the Quick Bits. I could die. Reviews for Star Wars Outlaws are out and it is fine. Some, like the Rolling Stone, are calling it one of the best Star Wars games ever made, while others, like Rock Paper Shotgun, are calling it a perfectly okay bit of Star War. Stitched out of the most inoffensive parts of other popular video games, like a generic yet pleasant Frankenstein's monster. Now, some might argue that this is an approach that deprives a game of a clear, unique identity, but it's also an approach that has earned Outlaws a 77 on Metacritic, AKA a solid C+. Activision, the font of great ideas, apparently canceled a Crash Bandicoot Spyro crossover game in favor of more multiplayer and live service games. This is according to an in-depth report on developer Toys for Bob from Liam Robertson of Did You Know Gaming. Apparently, players would have controlled both Crash and Spyro as they tried to save both of their worlds from a shared threat. Why not both? Unfortunately, since Activision didn't consider Crash 4's launch sales high enough, they canned the game after about four months of work. The only explanation we can think of as to why Activision would make that decision is that they just couldn't find enough room in their pockets for all the money they would have made. Oh, that's where I'm gonna put my Black Ops money. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo had their Indie World and Partner Showcase today, another event requiring an official tweet to let fans know the Switch 2 will not be featured. Stop asking! But there were some interesting games shown off. Sea of Stars announced a free expansion arriving next spring called Throws of the Watchmaker. I'm curious already. Plus, the Nintendo Switch is finally getting a port of Yakuza Kiwami, the remake of the first Yakuza game. We also got more details about dating sim with literal name, date everything. Turns out that included in the game's category of everything is the game's own text box, text box Chan, and Doug, also known as your overwhelming sense of existential dread. He should be bigger. World of Warcraft's The War Within expansion, the first part of the three expansion World Soul Saga, is officially live for all players as of yesterday. Of course, in what is now a gaming trend that's here to stay, players could pay for three days of early access. And it's so worth it. Those three days were, oh. Definitely three days. Everyone was dancing around in bliss like this with their noodle arms. And you totally missed it. <laughs> and that's exactly what players like Jinji did. That's because Jinji had a lofty goal, leveling up 17 characters to the new level cap of 80 within one day. To his credit, he did just that, but at the cost of falling asleep on stream. But reaching level 80 on all of his characters is an achievement that will stay with him until the next expansion launches. Hey, it's level 90, baby. Good luck, Jinji. And a well-known video game accessibility advocate and co-founder of Can I Play That, Susan Banks, oh geez, died of a stroke. Oh, okay, but she's not real. <laughs> and a well-known video game accessibility advocate and co-founder of Can I Play That, Susan Banks, died of a stroke in 2019, except maybe she never actually existed. Okay. Banks was allegedly a professor and deaf Turkish immigrant. However, a PI was unable to find any legal record of her. After her husband, Koti Craven, claimed she was injured by a falling stand mixer and had both her legs amputated, a story that is definitely suspicious in hindsight, the hospital told well-wishers it had no record of her. However, that would raise questions about her so-called husband and what he did with the money he crowdfunded from her death. Widower's only trip to Aruba? Jamaica? Ooh, I wanna take ba you? Bahama? Come on, baby mama! If you need more info about that, which I do, uh, check out the news sources in the description. We, we, we'll have some links. But even if you're overseas living off the ill-gotten wealth from faking your imaginary wife's death, you should come back on Thursday for more gaming news. You'll enjoy that regardless.